couple of minutes as soon as uh, one of my colleagues arrives, and uh, we're going to check and see where they are, but hopefully we will start pretty shortly. This meeting of the Personnel and Animal Welfare Committee to order, and uh, I will ask that we put uh, item two and three on consent without objection. And uh, let's start with uh, item number one. Item number one, communication from the mayor relative to the exemption of one chief financial officer for the Bureau of Sanitation pursuant to Charter Section 1001B. Welcome. Good afternoon, council members. My name is uh, Raphael Porter, personnel department. Um, personnel officer representing the Bureau of Sanitation. And I wonder if you could walk us through this item briefly. Um, sanitation, we are requesting um, an exemption of the Chief Financial Officer for the Bureau of Sanitation. This position was previously exempted um, and was vacated in December of 2013. Um, we are requesting that the exemption be renewed. Okay, now I know the that there was uh, a recent exam for the Chief Financial Officer class. Um, why do we still need an exemption given that the, the city recently tested uh, for this class? Um, executive management was, uh, has come to the conclusion with a budget of approximately $1 billion, uh, this authority will manage various special funds with such a large responsibility. The Bureau would appreciate the ability to have flexibility to select um, a person that has a candidate that has the experience and ability to oversee such a large um, organization in such a critical role. Okay. And did the personnel department review this request? Um, I believe they did in the review and the report that came back based on the classification and nature of the duties. Uh, they have approved that the nature of the work is sufficient and appropriate for the role of chief financial officer. Very good. Uh, Mr. O'Farrell, any questions? Uh, I do not have any questions. Okay, in that case, uh, we will approve this request uh, without objection. Thank you very much. Certainly. Item number four. Item number four, CAO to report and personnel department report relative to authorizing the renewal of the city's contract with Mercer Human Resource Services for the administration of the city's civilian modified flexible benefits program for an additional three years through June 4th, 2017. Also, subsequent to the release of the agenda, we have received the CAO's formal report and copies have been delivered for your review. Thank you. Good afternoon. Jenny Mock with the Office of the CAO, and I have Stephen Montaigne here from uh, the Personnel Department as well. So the item before the committee today requests approval of Supplemental Agreement Number 4 with Her Mercer Human Resources Services. Mercer is the third-party administrator for the city's flex benefits programs. The Supplemental Agreement would extend the term of the contract by three years to provide ongoing administrative record keeping and communication services, increase funding authority for authorized modifications for the city's uh, flex benefits programs and upgrade the benefits administration software and website with no increase in rates. The joint, the joint labor benefits management committee or JLMBC recommended approval of the three year extension to maintain service continuity and to take advantage of the upgrade of the benefits website with no increase in the rates. The annual compensation on the contract is based on the number of participants enrolled in the city's flex benefit program. The annual expenditure for ongoing recurring administrative services has averaged and is expected to be about 1.5 million per year. Funding is provided in the 2014-15 Human Resources Benefits Adopted Budget for this purpose. As the contract does provide service continuity with no increase in rate, rates, we recommend approval of the agreement. With me, again, is Steven Montaigne, so we're available to answer any questions that you may have at this time. Now there's a flat fee of 25000 per month? Correct. Um, as I'm, I'm guessing, although I don't know the exact number, uh, we're certainly down a few thousand employees. Does, uh, should that have any impact in, in reducing that fee, or is it offset by other things that would normally increase? You know, our, um, the, the, the call center, um, the, the number of calls that we 
receive has stayed relatively constant. So it, it's over the, over the last several years, it's averaged between 19 uh, and uh, uh, 20,000 calls annually. So um, with with a, the the one thing to keep in mind with the call center is that you know those those resources need to be available throughout the year. Um, you know, and, and there there have been a variety of of, of special projects and, and special initiatives that have taken place over the last few years that have that have resulted in increases in, in call volume. So, for example, just this past year, um, there, there there was a change in uh, um, one of the healthcare providers. So we, we went from Anthem to um, Blue Shield, and that that generated a lot of, of questions and and, uh, and calls to the call center. And why a renewal of Mercer as opposed to an RFP? Well, we, we will, we are moving forward. Um, uh, we'd actually like to move forward in two phases. So the, the first would be a um, request for information. We'd, we'd like to sort of go, go out to the market and be able to, to, to see um, if, if there are, are, are um, you know, certain services out there that, that, that we're not providing that we might want to include um, within the next RFP. And then in the next RFP, we want to make sure that, that we're covering everything. You know, not 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 only the services that we're currently providing, but there there may be other services that we'd like to add in. Um, so we feel like this is this is the best approach for for moving forward. So we're 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 doing a three-year extension. Yes, the Correct. recommendation is for a three-year extension. And you'll be looking at what you were just talking about over the course of those three years, presumably. Right, right. I mean, and 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 really, I mean, al although it may seem like. Like you know, three years is, is, is a lot of time to do both of those processes within that period of time. We'll, we will need to be moving forward on that uh, relatively quickly. Okay. Um, one thing I'd like a, a report back on, but not not holding this item up uh, uh, from either personnel or the JLMBC um, on the dependent eligibility audit and the expected plan year costs for 2015 for the flux benefits program. We'd, we'd be happy to do that. That would be great. Mr. O'Farrell, any additional? Okay, well, in that case, uh, we will uh, approve and authorize the general manager of personnel to negotiate uh, and execute a contract extension with Mercer. Okay. For the record, can we ask that you adopt the CAO recommendation? Yes. Okay, great. For the Thank CEO you. recommendation, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item number five. Item number five, city attorney report and ordinance amending subsections B and F through K of section 61.07 of article one of chapter six of Los Angeles Municipal Code to rename industrial waste inspector job classifications as environmental compliance investigators and specify their authority. Good afternoon, uh, Ted Jordan, Assistant City Attorney, Public Works General Counsel, and I'm joined by uh, staff from the Bureau of Sanitation. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Shuram Karagani, LA Sanitation. Uh, very briefly, uh, pursuant to the Council's request, we've prepared the ordinance that's before you. It makes changes to the Municipal Code Section 6107 and 6470.06. It's, uh, for the most part, housekeeping. The Job the job classification titles in the existing municipal code are outdated. The industrial waste inspector category is now an environmental compliance inspector. And so this ordinance seeks to correct that. And by doing so, we are properly designating the current classification of environmental compliance inspectors as public officers and who are afforded the protections therefore. It's the same authority that the current Bureau of Street Services officers have. And so we, what we did was we went through this code section and made all those corrections, including sort of looking at it from top to bottom to, to make clarifications that were necessary to comply and conform to state law. Um, Bureau of Sanitation is here. They have a few comments which we asked them to bring directly to the committee. That would be great if we could. Yes, Mr. Chair, two minor friendly adjustments to the ordinance. One is uh, the, the title of investigator, we call all of them environmental compliance in, in, inspectors. So that's just a typo that needs to be corrected. And to provide the Bureau with the flexibility, within our Bureau we have inspectors, both in stormwater program, wastewater, and solid resources, to provide the flexibility of rotation among all the inspectors. We also would like to ask the watershed protection program to be removed, and this authority be given within the Bureau of Sanitation. So we have flexibility of assigning folks 
from wastewater to come and help me on a stormwater program and, and from solid side. Those are the two minor adjustments. Okay, how many current employees would be in the environmental compliance inspector class? At this moment that I'm speaking with you, I have 18 inspectors and three seniors at this moment, but there are, there are other resolution authority and on freezes that are in place to increase them by another five. And how do the inspectors perform their duties? What exactly do they do? Basically, the permit, the stormwater permit requires them to do three things. One is, of course, we have some 40,000 commercial industrial facilities throughout the city. They have to inspect them, you know, on, on twice during the life of the permit. Then they respond to all the ER in the city, from UCLA water break to fires, because all, everything that happens in watershed goes to stormwater. And the city is, is liable to make sure that we would watch and monitor the water quality and let all the agencies know that's number two for ER. And of course, the third one right now, as you know, the homeless encampments, illegal dumping all over the city, our inspections are the front line from Bureau of Sanitation to identify what is called hazardous and non-hazardous as far as you know, disposal and tag and bag and storage. So they perform those three main categories of programs. That seems like a lot actually for it is, 18 it, inspectors. Correct, and that's what you know, the Bureau is asking for more, you would see as a part of the budget, hopefully 15, 16, we would be asking for more, Mr. Chair. Very good. Mr. O'Farrell, anything additional? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. This new job classification, what abilities does it give sanitation ins inspectors now? Uh, what will this give them that they currently don't have? It, it, this provides them, as you know, a lot of cases that we deal with ultimately end up in court. Mm -hmm. This provides them to do their investigation more thoroughly and they have the authority documentation. So when they, they appear a lot of time, all of most of these cases end up in court. So when they appear in court, this, the, the, the responsibility that you see with this ordinance provides them the more credibility and doing their job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think it's a wonderful uh, new classification that provides tools um, and, and for inspectors and takes away the loopholes that these illegal dumpers have. It, they're getting away with things right and left every day. So I think it's a wonderful new improvement. Exactly, Council Member, yes. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, we appreciate all the good work that the department did uh, recently uh, with our, our little uh, emergency at UCLA. So, thank so, you uh, very much, sir. Thank you for that. And uh, uh, we will move this item forward. So just for clarification then, um, with, with, with the amendments. To the with the amendments, suggested. okay. So we'll submit a revised version of the ordinance then to the council so it'll reflect the two uh, changes that were presented here. That would be great. So we'll, we'll approve the ordinance as amended with the wording that you'll pass on to council. Thank you so much. Item six. Item six, Department of Animal Services reports relative to acceptance of a $380,000 donation from the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals for New Hope fees. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Would you like me to give a summary? Yeah, if you could okay. just walk us through it briefly. Sure. John Chavez with the Department of Animal Services. We received $380,000 from the ASPCA. The design of this particular money is to pay for the $50 adoption costs that our New Hope partners have to pay to adopt or pull animals from our shelter. The, um, the New Hope adopt, um, partners, they represent the animal uh, rescue groups that assist us in finding homes, permanent homes for our, our shelter animals. Um, this represents about a year's worth of adoption costs for our New Hopers, um, which num they number about 238 uh, partners. Uh, part of the money, the $50, is used for sterilization, and the other, the other part of the money is used for microchips. So we're recommending that it go into two separate funds, the Animal Welfare Trust Fund and Animal Sterilization Fund. So I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. So how many extra adoptions do you think that adds up to? Uh... Um, well, last year they did about 7,000 adoptions. We're hoping that with this... Um, with, with this kind of a subsidy that we can get more than that. So um, we're tracking that to see if this will serve as an inducement for them to, to uh, continue to assist us in our adoptions. Yeah, that's a very generous uh, uh, offer to the city. So yeah, we agree. Uh, ho hopefully uh, it has a, a very positive effect. We do too. Mr. O'Farrell, any 
Anything additional? I think it's great too, and I want to commend AASPCA uh, for this wonderful grant and New Hope Partners. And I've just got to, I got to quote what Christine mentioned here in my notes, and that is that they're helping to make sure as many pets as possible have that chance to make someone's life that much brighter by adopting and not shopping. That's right. That's what this does. She's it absolutely saves, right. <laughs> it saves thousands of animals yeah. per year because of this wonderful grant. So we're, we're very grateful for that, yes. Thank you. So this is great, and of course, uh, we will uh, move this forward without even the slightest objection. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And uh, we also have one speaker from the public under general public comments, Stephen Garr. I wrote something brief out. There's two copies. I guess there's two Kelsey people. Basically, I'm just knocking on doors. Uh, a while back, I was uh, uh, with Department of Building and Safety inspection staff. And um, one day near the end of employment, I yelled out, it turned out that I yelled out because of blood pressure, and the supervisor thought I yelled out because of his comments. And the chief took it. Uh, the real reason I was terminated was I was argumentative. And uh, Bob McCready um, investigated, and through his investigation, he asked for a review of all medical records. The medical records showed blood pressure at extremely elevated levels, and at a later date, it caused a heart attack. Um, it, um, all I can say is, without reading this whole thing verbatim, is um, I was a bit politically incorrect, but I was basically under the weather. And through Building and Safety's investigation, um, basically, uh, they saved my life. Uh, what I'm asking for is um, the building department is upset with me because when I yelled out, I believed I yelled out because of what the chief said. So I kept with that point. And then when B Mr. McCready um, had the medical records, I, I thought about it. I was having extremely bad headaches, and the headaches um, I yelled out from. And I didn't care for what the supervisor was saying, but that was not the reason. And I never yelled out before or after because of the reasons that the chief enumerated. Um, when I came back, he was upset. The chief still remembered, you know, why he was upset with me. Um, I scored very high on the technical test. Um, Tom Coltis, AGM personnel, said, we know you knew and did your job. Uh, Mr. McCready said, uh, basically, uh, this is, has medical written all over it. You can continue. The request is... Um, it really should have been a workers' comp case if I had known. Um, Mr. Um, Notemeyer, Chief Workers' Comp, I'm requesting that he review it without respect to time frames, and if he so sees it in my favor, uh, just to comp out a little bit of time on my vesting, and that's basically it. So you're you're not seeking your job back. What are you? Uh, I think they would, uh, right now, the city's impacted, and it's been a long time. But, you know, I mean, if they don't want to uh, uh, add some vesting time, then, yeah, yes, I would, with the guidance of my physician. And she's a UCLA medical professor. And this occurred in early 2000? Well, in 2000, I really mouthed off. And when Mr. McCready asked for the review of medical records, uh, it showed that uh, I had a heart attack from EKGs. Uh, and uh, I was not doing too well. My mom had passed away, and I was having a lot of medical. That was the first heart attack. Uh, they also did more reviews, and it required open heart surgery. So why the long period of time before? Because I had that? no one, I had no idea of what was really going on. The blood pressure was still going on. The me underlying medical was still going on, and I couldn't explain it excuse until. Me. Excuse me, what? I'm sorry. Um, Deputy City Attorney Judith Thompson here, on behalf of uh, Zena Houston. Um, 
I don't believe this is a matter that is on this agenda. I was just about to say that. And so, so uh, under the Brown Act rules, um, it's it's not appropriate for our discussion. Right. So we, we'll uh, uh, we'll look into this and uh, we'll we'll be in touch with you. But we there's nothing we can do about it today because it's not on on the agenda. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. How, mm -hmm. Okay. Should I? Try to contact either of your offices in a month or so. Yeah, why don't you contact uh, my office to see uh, where where it is? We'll take a look at the issue, and uh, we'll either contact you or, or you can contact uh, Mr. Hirsch in my office. Yeah, I believe. Thank you. Thank you. And with no other uh, no other public comment uh, or items, we are adjourned.